evening, Slashaholics, and welcome to episode number one of Slash Tracks Action News Express. This is where Josh and I are going to give you the hard-hitting and up-to-date, up-to-the-minute uh, news stories that you can't live without, and we're going to do it all within 30 minutes or less. Or less. Yeah, or the maybe pizza less. Free. The pizza may be free. Yeah. <laughs> You're, hey, 121 and an eighth. Where the hell is 121 and an eighth? <laughs> You're standing on it, dude. Josh, uh, before we get into the really quick-hitting Express episode that all the Slashaholics are just dying to see that they didn't even know was coming, uh, which is going to drop randomly at some point in the next couple days, uh, let's get them with the slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com business email where they can send us questions uh for advice for the, uh, the for the full podcast for the express episodes uh if sponsors like what they see if they want to partner with us and uh they want to maybe sponsor an episode of express or reviews or slash tracks or whatever they can get a hold of us at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com and also josh hit them with the patreon and let's get into the fun all right patreon.com forward slash 80 slash your librarian sign up for as low as a dollar a month and you can support the channel and uh, keep it going and growing for a long time to come. Heck yeah. All right, Josh, nice comment for the first episode of Slash Tracks News Express. Now, this is referring to uh, Slash Tracks episode number 24, Slash Tracks News, uh, the last podcast we did. This is from Mustafa Toprak. He says, that beeping out part was great, smiley face. Did you get it all out, or did you guys slip up while filming? You want to answer that question, Josh? And we slipped up a few times. <laughs> De- definitely. There was some serious editing we had to do. There was some clapping going on where we had to go back and see where the cussing was, for sure. Hey, we made it one episode without fucking cussing, though. So. Oh, my God. Yeah, this one's not sponsored, boys and girls, so uh, we can say whatever the fuck we want in this, so whatever. Uh, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. It was difficult. It reminded me of when I worked for Fox Sports uh, Radio, because I really had to watch what I said. And, uh, it really, you know, it's okay. It's a nice way to do things every once in a while. But when, uh, Josh and I can't have our full personality on show, you know, on showcase or on full tilt, it's makes it really hard. It does. Yeah. Um, so anyway, hey, last night, second and last nice comment of the episode. We're not doing a mean comment in the express. The haters can kiss our ass for this one. This is, we're doing everything we want fast and furious and fun in this episode. No Debbie Downer shit. All right, kudos. This was funny and informative. And that's from Aniha Senai. And that's regarding Slash Tracks News, episode number 24. Thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Aniha Senai. Maybe the greatest uh, maybe the greatest name ever. There's a lot of eyes in that name, Josh. I like, I like Nehi Soda. That was always good. Oh, Nehi, legendary. But in Oregon, really hard to find. You had to find it in like some sort of weird niche restaurant. That wasn't really probably a restaurant. Uh, it was a restaurant only in name because they were probably laundering money from drug sales. Yeah. In it. Yeah. Hey, you know, actually, we do have a sponsor tonight. It is? Mikey Clark is most likely sponsoring this episode tonight. Thanks, Mikey. Uh, Mikey. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Slash Tracks, Act- <laughs> Slash Tracks News Express episode number one is brought to you in subsidiary by Lorimar Television and... <laughs> Friends like you, and by Michael Clark. Michael Clark. Uh, let's get into some fun facts, uh, Josh. All right. Mos- mosquitoes urinate on you while while also feeding on your blood. Yep. Did you know that? No, but uh, they're, they're dicks, so, you know, I can see it. They're just little insect assholes, so, yeah. They're not only... They're not only Uh, feeding on your life source, Josh, they're also pissing all over you and into the wound that they're creating, most likely. (laughs) Why do mosquitoes exist at this point? Like, what's the reasoning? Has any scientist ever figured out why why they're in existence? I don't know. Do you think a mosquito has to go to the doctor to be like, doctor, help, I'm pissing blood? They're like, oh, no, that's, (laughs) you're totally, or, yeah, STDs? What's that situation with a mosquito? How does that work? Um, there's a lot of questions. If anyone is a a mosquito doctor, uh, please leave a comment right down below and let us know how that works. STDs with mosquitoes. 
Or if you're a mosquito uh, masquerading as a human, we're on to you. <laughs> Jeff, do you hear me? Jeff? Oh, yeah. We know. All right. Hey, Josh, in the 1980s, when the Navy first heard the slang term friend of Dorothy uh, used by gay men to identify one another privately, they launched a massive witch hunt for a woman named Dorothy, whom, <laughs> whom that they believed was running an underground gay military operation. Wow. It's just ignorance, man. Ignorance all the way up. To this day, we still have kind of, we have some ignorance and, uh, like that. So, Whew. Anybody named Dorothy is immediately <laughs> just a big bullseye on their chest from the from the Navy. I can't believe that, that that sort of thing was happening in the 1980s. I know, that's crazy. Um, it doesn't seem like that long ago, but I guess, you know, we covered um, Mark Patton, you know, a little bit on our Freddy's Revenge review and his documentary Scream Queen. Like, he couldn't come out of the closet in the 80s because if you came out in the 80s, it's basically the kiss of death for your career. Yeah. So, that's, I mean, in the Navy, was it Bill Clinton that did the Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Was he the yeah. one who... Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> friends of Dorothy. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Wow. That's hilarious. That's kind of that's stupid and hilarious at the same time. Let Let's get into last fun fact of the very first ever Express episode. All right. Fear can cause your body to produce more earwax, Josh. Ah, okay. So people that you know get it all gunked up in their earbuds all the time are just scary cats. Well, they've, been, they've been listening to the books on the channel. Oh yeah, they've listened to all your audiobook narrations of horror novels that are hard to find, um, and they just produce so much earwax it actually like comes out of their ears and over their headphones or you know over their their uh, fucking what earbuds. <laughs> earbuds. Excuse me, their Beats by Dre, Wax <laughs> by Josh, Earwax by Josh. That's crazy. That's I wonder did. how they came across that. Did they scare the shit out of a bunch of people while they were like keeping track of their earwax volume? You know, just, know. people are told to, you know, go sit in a room and, you know, all of a sudden, like a, a clown with a chainsaw kicks the door in, you know, and after <laughs> and they go and measure the earwax and say, OK, we'll be back in a minute. You know, two hours later, a little girl crawls out of the TV or something and check Dude, the earwax. You, just, <laughs> you just terrified me with that image. Uh, ch <laughs> chainsaw clowns versus nuclear grizzlies. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Chainsaw wielding clowns versus nuclear grizzlies. <laughs> That's a new twist on that, man. Pennywise with a chainsaw. Uh, hey, uh, Johnny Depp in the first Nightmare on Elm Street, when he's got the headphones on and he's, you know, yeah. killed and sucked in. Well, no, he's not sucked into the water, but he's just sucked into a bed. To a bed and it yeah. turns into a bloody mess. His headphones, um, you know, Freddie feeds on fear. What? How much earwax was left at the crime scene? Because he was scared. Because Freddie, you know, murdered him in his dreams. He was wearing the headphones. Uh, it, the headphones were left at the crime scene. Did the detectives uh, wonder why so much earwax was all over the murder scene? <laughs> That's, they said, we need to get a team of scientists on this right now and figure <laughs> out what's going on. Lieutenant Thompson. We got it. Lieutenant Thompson. Why the hell is there so much earwax on your daughter's boyfriend's bed? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, hey, would you rather? Let's get into it. The one, the one would you rather for this Express episode. Okay. All right, man. This is from Sanju Kakur. And it's, uh, I butchered that name. I apologize, uh, Sanju. Would you rather? So, Josh, would you rather have Hulk Hogan or Roddy Piper as your tag team partner in a big time wrestling match? Ooh, I don't know. Um... I think I'm gonna have to go with my 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 heel hero here, and VIP Josh Larue has to tag up with uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Okay, well Hogan, then Hogan will just work the match with me. We'll we'll bust our ass, and then I'll fight somebody on the outside, or have to run to the back to check on Elizabeth, and then he'll beat both the people we're fighting anyways. <laughs> so it was pointless to tag with him. So. Yeah. I'm going to tag with Hogan uh, to the surprise of nobody that watches this show. And it's not for the reason that you think because he was my favorite wrestler growing up. It's because if I'm tagging with him, inevitably it's going to lead to some sort of uh, breakup where I'm going to be in a big money pay-per-view down the road with him. Yeah. So I'm going to get paid for that. And if I'm in a tag match with Hogan, 
Because Hogan never tagged with anybody unless it led down the road to a big money pay-per-view. It's a big deal that he's in a tag team match, and it's going to probably be main eventing whatever pay-per-view he's tagging at. So I'm getting two huge paydays. Yes, I will tag with Hulk Hogan both times for the win. Hey, I've got a would you rather for the viewers at home. Would you rather Alex and I riff out of new movie titles Winnie Pooh, Winnie the Pooh and the Hunt for Blood and Hunt. October. <laughs> or uh, Halloween Ends. Those are two newer titles. If we ripped one of those uh, this season, which one would you prefer? Um, I know which one I would prefer to make fun of. So We'll probably end up doing both of them at some point. But I yeah. think Halloween, um, Halloween Kills is definitely going to get riffed. I think Halloween Ends is going to get riffed. Uh, Halloween ends should just be called Michael Myers takes a vacation yeah. or, or Michael Myers lives in the sewer. I don't know. Like it's, there's not, not a lot of Michael Myers in the Michael Myers movie at the, uh, to end things. Yeah. Um, Josh, let's get into the one slash tracks news express sports story. Okay. Okay. The, the, <laughs> the New York Mets uh, this week, or actually it was last week because today's Monday. So last week, the Mets broadcasting team was at the Oakland Coliseum. So the for the Oakland A's, my favorite baseball team, not only are they suffering on the field because they have only three wins and like 11 losses, but the building they play in is the oldest in baseball. Oakland Coliseum is a, a dump. And the Mets broadcasting team actually had to vacate uh, the visiting recording booth uh, where they like do the commentary for the games. So yeah. they had to... <laughs> They had to leave the uh, the area where they were recording, uh, broadcasting, uh, because there's a possum living in the walls of Oakland Coliseum's visiting uh, broadcasting booth. And it's not because the possum lives in the walls that they left. The possum's living in the walls, Slashaholics, so the possum is uh, going to the bathroom in the walls, and yeah. the stench of possum feces was so overbearing they couldn't even make it through like one or two innings. <laughs> so the Mets broadcasting team had to leave the, the field. So like in the middle of the first night, they were like, oh, possum. <laughs> dude, oh, yeah. It's, no, dude, there's a photo of this possum's head sticking out of the ceiling at yeah. the baseball field. Yeah, it's like it's alive and well living at this stadium. <laughs> Um, the Oakland A's are having a really hard time, man. They're they're rumored heavily to be moving to Las Vegas. For some reason, the Oakland A's owner just does not want to spend any money on the team or the or the field or anything. It's it's a mess. They have possums living in the fucking walls, Josh, taking oh, dumps in the walls. Yeah, yeah, possum dumps. So not only a shitty product on the field, boys and girls, a shitty product in the walls too. There, Josh. Let's get into Slash Tracks News Wrestling. Let's do it. All right. Huge story. It's been two weeks since we've had our last episode. Uh, Josh, it literally dropped like the day after Josh and I recorded, so we didn't have time to talk about it. WWE agrees to merge with UFC to create a new company run by Ari Emanuel and Vince McMahon. Uh, They're forming a (laughs) a new publicly traded company controlled by Endeavor Group. Endeavor will own 50, uh, 51% stake of the new company. WWE shareholders will have the remaining 49%. The new company is valued to be $21.4 million in total, $9.3 billion coming from WWE, $12.1 billion coming from UFC. Ari Emanuel will be the chief executive, uh, executive of Endeavor, the new company. And Vince McMahon is back and will be the executive chairman, Josh. So Vince McMahon is officially back. Not that we didn't predict this before. Yeah, he wasn't going to stay away. He's back. You, you know how I feel. I think this is uh, going to. This is the probably one of the last nails in the coffin for WWE. I it's really. Mess. It's gonna. It's gonna go. I, they've got such a big library. I don't think WWE is ever going to go away. But. I think this is going to really change things, and I bet they end up splitting the two companies back up again in the future. Um, remember, I said that in case it happens, uh, but I well, do see it coming. There's like a couple things that happen, like so. Vince McMahon. Okay, so here's a few things. 
just right off the top of my head. Vince McMahon showed up to the big, the big interview the next day with uh, Ari Emanuel with dyed jet black dyed hair <laughs> and a pencil thin dyed black mustache. Vince yeah. McMahon has a mustache now. He yeah. looks like somebody that would like steal uh, a damsel in distress and tie her to the railroad tracks. He looks <laughs> like Snively. Wh- yeah. yeah. He, look, he looks like Snively Whiplash. Um, I can't believe, I've never seen Vince McMahon with a mustache. It's so bizarre to see him with a mustache and it's just such a weird mustache. It's like, uh, who's the guy, the director, the creep, they call him the creep, John Waters. Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. yeah he's got a John Waters mustache. You know what that's uh, what he's trying to say with uh, with that mustache? What? Stand back. <laughs> Wasn't that the song? Was that the yeah. song? Oh Stand yeah, in the eighties. Stand back. For the nineteen eighties uh, record pile driver with Hulk Hogan on the cover with a hard hat on and a big sledgehammer. Um, yeah, and Mr. Wonderful sings all the songs Hogan was supposed to sing. Hogan yeah, Hogan didn't even show up. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Wonderful did all Hogan's parts. Again. Um, so Not Vince really. has got this weird mustache. Vince is back in powers, which proves that you can actually assault females uh, and pay them off and get away with it. Um, Not everybody. You just have to have a billion dollars <laughs> to be able to do it. Um, I just... It's like, it's crazy, man. Like he, when he bought WWF before it was WWE from his father, it was $1.1 million or whatever that he had to pay. And now it's worth $9.3 billion. He does all these shady things. Like he allegedly, um, you know, raped uh, a female referee in a limousine. Um, yeah, there's so much. It's like paid. He recently, um, Paid her money, I believe, um, to like make it go away. Um, there's just a lot of really crazy things. It's just a, such a sad thing that y- a person like this is going to be put back in power. And it's also sad because WrestleMania happened the night before this was announced. The big uh, merger was announced. So Cody Rhodes was, you know, won the Royal Rumble. He's booked against Roman Reigns. Everybody just assumed that Cody Rhodes was going to win the title and bring back the winged eagle belt and all these great things were going to happen because Triple H is in control. Well, slowly, before WrestleMania even happened, before this sale was even uh, announced, you could kind of see the writing on the wall with Raw. Like, um, apparently Raw, like Vince McMahon's favorite thing to do is rewrite Raw, the segments, like, minutes before the wrestlers are supposed to go into the ring. So he's like changing the storylines and like the match, like Josh, you're going to win. No, wait, no, Alex is going to win. And he's just changing stuff on the fly. So a lot of nonsense show rewrites have been happening. And obviously that's not triple H doing that. You know, Vince was obviously controlling things before he was put back in power by this new company that's ran by Endeavor now. Um, it's just a really sad thing. And Cody Rhodes uh, didn't win the belt at WrestleMania. He lost. And then the next night on Raw, he got demolished by Brock Lesnar, who was his tag team partner in the main event that night. So now he's in a feud with Brock Lesnar. But he was left looking, laying and looking like a complete pussy. Uh, so he went from like, <laughs> Cody Rhodes was probably going to win the belt that Dusty never got to win. And then he just got completely obliterated by Brock, Les- <laughs> by Brock Lesnar the next night, dude. He might that's as well Vince. be Stardust, man. That's Vince. Vince did that. I don't know. I'm just saying he might as well be wrestling as Stardust. It's Dude, man. Um, Vince 100% did that. I think you can't tell me that Triple H didn't have Cody booked to win that belt. Oh, yeah. Vince is still pissed about Cody doing the whole AEW thing. So. Yeah. It's a, Vince it's a mess. Vince is not, whenever he says it's just business, it is. But when somebody else does something that's just business... It's personal. So extremely personal. Yeah, extremely personal. He's so, like guy that takes stuff very personal. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Maybe maybe he'll suffer the same fate. Um, yeah, so I, I'm just sick of the guy. I, I really thought we got rid of him, Alex. And so, so, did, so did I, but you know what? He's 77 years old. He looks like absolute. He looks like a baseball glove that you're trying to break in. His face looks like a baseball glove that you put oil on at night and you... 
wrap a big you know rubber band around it. You put the ball in the in the pocket of the glove, and then when it, when it, when you wake up, you take the ball out, take the rubber band off, and then just beat the shit out of that glove. Well, That's yeah. what Vince's face looks like now. And I'm gonna make this my last comment about the wrestling. Roman Reigns is not the Rock. Roman Reigns. More people dislike the guy than like him. Like just because you. Try your damnedest to make him the next rock does not make him the next rock. Um, I think we're in an era of wrestling right now where the, the main, the top of the card needs to be carried by like an ensemble. It's not the days of like one person carrying the company, I think, are gone. So I don't, I don't really like it when, when Roman Reigns gets shoved down our throats and stuff. Um, I think it was time for, for Cody to step in and get the belt. And they're, uh, they're trying to get Roman to 1,000 days as champion. I know that's got to be what they're doing because they just love those. This wrestler has had the belt the longest yeah, in the modern era, whatever. That's, that's an 80s thing. You know, today it's about the ensemble. If you don't get that belt on somebody else within 1,000 days like that, I don't know, man. It's just, look at the three, ratings. Nitro three, is better. Dude, three years of Roman Reigns uh, just being unstoppable. I've had enough of it. Yeah. A I think second... Second and last wrestling story of uh, the first ever Express episode. On April 4th, 1993. So, you know, two weeks ago uh, it was April 4th. So 30 years ago, Hulk Hogan came out of nowhere at WrestleMania 9 to defeat Yokozuna in 22 seconds to become a five-time WWF world champion. I got hey, let me on that, Josh. Hogan coming down the aisle and Brett's there. This is what I always picture them saying, you know, Hogan going, oh, brother, he got you in the eye. Uh, I'm getting really old and I don't know my way around. Which way to the ring? And then Brett's like, <laughs> you know, that's what he does. Like, he's like pointing at the ring, like, get him, Hogan. Like, really? That was, it was so cringy. Just, uh. Why would hey. Brett, I mean, even storyline wise, why would Brett want Hogan to go? I mean, it, Okay. Brett probably doesn't want Hogan to go win the belt, even even in even in kayfabe mode or storyline mode, right? Yeah. Because Brett wants to be the champ. Brett just got salt thrown in his fucking eyes. Number and got screwed. Number two, how does Hogan even have a title shot? Nobody signed a contract. Nothing. So Mr. Fuji just saying, yeah, we'll do it. Like that's that's all it took. I guess so. I guess. How so. the hell does that work? And why was Hogan in, still in his full gear? He, he had the match with the Mega Maniacs against Money, Inc. like literally two hours before the main event. Like usually Hogan would be getting room service by now. You know Vince tried to offer Hogan the world tag team titles that night. You know he did. And Hogan's like, that ain't going to work for me, brother. <laughs> it doesn't make sense why they would, because that Mega Maniacs versus Money, Inc. match was built up so much on Raw leading up to it for it to end in, like, a disqualification. And I think the Mega Maniacs lost, actually, yeah. by DQ. I, can't, I don't remember correctly, but I'm almost positive Money, Inc. won that match. Yeah. Um, I don't Just think they were... De yeah, I don't think they were DQ'd. I think Mega Maniacs got DQ'd. Um, so for them to build it up that much and to have no title change at WrestleMania was ridiculous. WrestleMania 9 was a horrible WrestleMania, by the way. There was a lot of sure. false finishes, DQs, like, countouts... Um, that was a really bad WrestleMania. Like, one of the best matches was, I think, Tatanka versus Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Didn't that open the WrestleMania? Yeah, they, they actually put on a pretty good match that night. So there, that, that was a horrible WrestleMania. Um, Hogan came out looking super thin. Um, had that big black eye that a lot of people said it was from, like, a jet ski accident or a weightlifting macho accident man. or something. It was Macho Man. <laughs> Allegedly, Macho Man punched him in the face because of the... Uh, Elizabeth thing, because Elizabeth, his ex-wife, Miss Elizabeth, was, like, staying with Hogan and Linda, Hogan's ex-wife, and no, that's when no. Liz left Macho Man. So Macho blamed Hogan for it, and I guess punched him in the face. Nobody can tell you if it actually happened, but that's heavily, you know, rumored that it happened, so who knows, man. You know what's even weirder about that? If that is true, Macho's on commentary for WrestleMania 9, and he's, like, building up Hogan. It's like, here comes Hogan, you know? Oh, yeah, here comes the Hulkster. Yeah, business is about ready to pick up. Yeah. 
<laughs> and you know, if that actually happened, Macho just kicked Hogan's ass in real life like 24 hours before that. I think I'm going to start putting little, find little mo- clips of Macho Man saying something, you know, because he always had something. He always was good with his words, you know. Yeah. I'm going to use that for uh, transitions to our different topics of the night. <laughs> little clips of him. Yeah, let's go to headlines. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to whore. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Josh, let's get some fun facts. Dig it. <laughs> um, uh, hey, anyway, so what's your thoughts on Hogan? I never, We never even really got into it. What's your thoughts on that? Were you, were you happy that Hogan won the title? <laughs> As a kid, I was, actually. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was like nine years old in 93. Um, but I think uh, the whole Brett thing as an adult is just funny to watch Brett having to play along with this whole thing. Like, go get him, Hogan. Yeah. Hating it, hating it, because Hogan. So the 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 real issue, slashaholics, that Josh and I know that maybe a lot of you guys don't know. So the deal was, Hogan would drop the title to Yoko because he's a big menacing heel, but he would not drop the title to Brett because it just doesn't make sense, brother. He's too small, brother, yeah. and so he he's not gonna put Brett over. But all of a sudden, Brett's got to endorse Yoke or Hogan and make him look like a million bucks at WrestleMania Nine after Hogan had already shit on him behind yeah. the scenes. Um, Hogan was the ultimate politician, and ninety nine percent of the time it worked out for him, except for uh, when Russo absolutely screwed him over and Double J had to lay down in the middle of the ring, <laughs> and and then Eric or excuse me, and then Vince Russo just created a brand new WCW belt out of nowhere and had Double J lose it to Booker T later that night or whatever. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, that was that was nuts. That was a mess. Yeah, big time. Bash at the Beach 2000, wasn't it? Or 99? It was, I don't know. It's it, hard to believe Hogan had only turned heel four years before that, you know? It, yeah. It seemed that period was so much longer, but it really wasn't. You no. Know? So so horribly mismanaged WCW. They went from owning and destroying the ratings and the wrestling business, being the number one company for a good two years. 96, Bash at the Beach, The Outsiders, Hogan Turns Heel, NWO is formed. Four years later, Double J is laying down in the ring for Hulk Hogan. <laughs> like Hogan it. just puts his foot on him. Kevin Nash at World War III, 1998, beating Goldberg. And then the next night, the finger poke of doom, or two weeks later, the finger poke of doom. Yeah. That, that, that was the death knell uh, when everything just pretty much went downhill when they when they did that. But uh, we have unexpressed our express episode. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into, <laughs> hey, let's get into, uh, let's get into Slash Tracks Express Horror. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Stranger, Th- Stranger Things is coming to an end after season five. So the next season that's coming out is season five. But mm-hmm. don't worry, boys and girls. The Duffer Brothers have uh, proudly announced that a Stranger Things cartoon is in the works. And it's going to be in the same vein as Saturday morning cartoons in the 1980s. Hell oh, yeah. I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah. So uh, created by Eric Robles, who previously made the cartoon Glitch Text for Netflix. Oh, Never yeah. heard of him. Have you heard of him? No, no. Okay, never heard of him, but apparently the Duffer Brothers are excited about him. Uh, it's got Saturday morning cartoon vibes. Uh, this is what the Duffer Brothers said uh, explicitly about the cartoon spinoff. This is a direct quote. We've always dreamed of an animated Stranger Things in the vein of the Saturday morning cartoons that we grew up loving, and to see this dream realized has been absolutely thrilling. So Stranger, Th- Stranger Things cartoon coming to Netflix soon. They should go to, they should get like a, uh artists and uh, cartoonists that are still alive that worked for filmation because filmation did so many cartoons back in the day like yeah the, the non real ghostbusters ghostbusters cartoon that was based on the old show with the monkey yes. uh yes. they did uh he-man didn't they wasn't yes. filmation yeah. behind he-man yeah, yeah. they did so many, yeah like uh, get, gets filmation involved there's actually a new ghostbusters cartoon and live action tv series in the work too uh, that's going to be fun. So. I hey, I like that you are thinking like that. I wish, I wish that they would just, you know, the real Ghostbusters. When Josh and I, it's no secret we love the Ghostbusters from the '80s, the movies, the cartoons, all that stuff. Um, I wish that they would just like 
whatever season it ended on when we were kids, like <laughs> Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, He-Man, whatever, just pick right up. Use the same style. Try to get the voices as, as close as you possibly can and just start new episodes right now. I think Nickelodeon may be preparing, I don't know for sure, to uh, after the Mutant Mayhem movie has come out and, mm-hmm. and you know, it's done its thing. I think when they announce their next animated series, like I'm, I think they might be going back to the 1980s style because I'm seeing all the toys pop back up in WalMarts and, and places the, like that. The Ninja Turtles. Yeah, all, all the like you saw, you have some of them. Oh yeah. Like, there's like all of them there: Bebop, Rocksteady, Krang, like the original figures, uh, Shredder with no shirt. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Splinter. And he's all, all hunched over the Shredder because he's like based on the comic book design, so he's like. Oh, and I got Crane for my birthday back in back in the 80s. Yeah. And, uh, my grandma told me she got me Crane, but when I opened it, it was Crane in the little metal robot uh, chair thing he had. It wasn't Crane in the body. Yeah, because they didn't have one yet. They that didn't, didn't have come it. Up, Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. was so I was so disappointed. Uh, the year before that, she got me uh, Dick Tracy toys, like the whole set. Oh man! The year after, the year after, or something. It was like 1990. Did it come out in 1990? Yeah, yeah 1990. 1990 was Dick Tracy, and I remember the one thought I had about Dick Tracy. I saw the movie once or twice. Um, Madonna was fine as hell. Um, they they were trying to copy the success of Batman uh, yeah. that came out in '89, so they were like as many villains as they could possibly have. So they re- went real heavy on the Dick Tracy villains and Dick Tracy's car. Like, I remember that being a big selling point for the toys and his yeah. watch. Do you remember the watch? Yeah. He had, like, an Apple watch, like, 40 years before Apple watch existed. I got, she, she, I got all, like, the whole set of toys in, like, 90 or 91. It might have been 91, and they were on sale or something, because they were, I, th- I remember they had sale stickers on yeah. the toys. They were, like, marked down, like, all the way. So I got all these Dick Tracy toys, and I had never seen Dick Tracy, didn't know who he was, <laughs> you know? It was like, uh, awesome like, birthday, yay! Why, why did they... Here's a question before we move into the next story. Why? What the hell were they... Yeah, the Dick Tracy thing. That was like a 1920s, like... Yeah, kids pro, were watching that movie. That wasn't Prohibition a era, like, <laughs> superhero. He wasn't even a superhero, he was just a detective. Like... Dick Tracy's just going after, like, gang members, see? And, and trying to break up bootleggers, see? And, like, nobody gives a shit in the 90s. That Nobody cared about that. Especially kids. Yeah, that's we ridiculous. Had Batman, Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, I mean, either. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They, they messed. That's like, hey, not, not, a, not even a missed opportunity because there was no opportunity. That was just a major fuck-up, whoever decided to do that. Yeah. Uh, next horror story... Before we close the horse segment for the Express episode, this is real quick. Uh, Dylan's New Nightmare, the trailer, has been uh, released on YouTube. I just watched it. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. And I've been in talks with the creator of that movie, and he is interested to sit down on getting sidetracked to talk about it. So Interested in his, like, he'll do it? or Yeah, he's, he's up for it. All we got to do is schedule it. Okay. And then, hey, is there any, any possibility of getting Miko on the show? I'm going to, that's what I thought we could try to work on through the first interview and uh, see if we can't uh, wow. have such a good time with uh, the creator that he's like sending Miko over, you know, that'd be cool. Yeah, I saw, so I saw the trailer and I was confused by a couple things. The Freddy that you see in the trailer for the Dylan's New Nightmare looks like the 1980s Freddy, right? Doesn't look yeah. like the leather pants Freddy from the Wes Craven's New Nightmare. And also, so it's Dylan's new nightmare. So he's still Heather Legenkamp's son. Okay. Is Heather in the movie? I, I don't know. I'm not sure of any of that because also Freddy's only got four claws in the trailer. And in New Nightmare, he had five. Okay. Uh, so they, they said he is the entity, not Freddy. But they okay. also said that Freddy was always the entity. So I guess the entity is going to like cycle through different versions of Freddy. Okay. This. So I don't know. I'm, that that could be cool. I'm cool with that. Um, hopefully they don't go uh, Freddy's Nightmares, Freddy, too heavily in Dylan's New Nightmare. Yeah, I just hope they don't. They didn't mess up and you know forget that New Nightmare was the entity. You know, like it, they just. That's why I ask you that. That's yeah. why I ask you that. It's like, so is it Freddy or is it the the demon that's pretending yeah. to be Freddy? Yeah. I actually asked them that three years ago when they put out the teaser and I saw just like four claws or whatever. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, wait, is this Freddy or the Entity? They said it's the Entity. They wrote back in the comments, and we'll get we can talk to. Them. But yeah. All right, hey, let's get into let's end the Express show with a few headlines and get out of here. Let's do it. All right, dude. Super Mario Brothers movie has already made six hundred and seventy-eight million dollars since its release on April fifth. It's the highest grossing film so far of 2023. It's already set the box office record for biggest worldwide opening weekend for an animated film ever. Ever. And it's also the highest grossing film ever based on a video game. Josh, what's your thoughts on the Super Mario Brothers movie early success? Uh, I'm gonna, I think that's amazing. I think that's awesome. I actually lo love the Bob Hoskins version too, so I'm not crapping on it. Uh, but I'm going to go see the new one pretty soon but all i can think about with this movie uh, you know ha breaking all these records is i bet we're gonna get a dun 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 dun, dun. i love a legend of zelda movie Ooh. Uh, i've wanted that forever so that, uh, that would yeah. be really good and it would like when we were kids the super mario brothers super show always had uh the zelda cartoon attached to it yep. and yep. also captain n in the game master where he'd like fight king hippo from super punch out and stuff um just an amazing cartoon when we were kids. Uh, Nintendo was terrified to make another Mario Brothers movie because the movie with Bob Haskins yeah. uh, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit uh, fame bombed so so badly in like 1993. Was that when that movie was released, Super Mario they Brothers? Right in the same time Jurassic Park did and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, you know, one of my thoughts when I was a kid, when the Mario Brothers movie came out in 93, even being 10 years old, I was like, why doesn't Luigi have a mustache? Yeah. Why is he so young? That's the and So I was really focused on why Luigi was so young and why he didn't have a mustache. And I was really confused about Dennis Hopper being Bowser. Yeah. Because it was just, he's half human and he gets pissed off and turns into a dinosaur. It didn't make any sense. As a, as a grown up, I like the movie. As a kid, it was confusing. But I mean, I still enjoyed it. I didn't go home disappointed. Yeah. I went home, you know, okay, I saw the Mario movie. It wasn't like it, it was special or anything, but uh, Dino Hatton. That's where, that's where, it, Dino Hatton, because the man and Manhattan means man. So, Dino Hatch. Uh, so I saw a meme on the internet the other day where it said, uh, my kids ask for the new Super Mario Brothers movie, but I said we have Super Mario Brothers at home, and then it shows the 93, a picture of the 93 movie. It says Mario Brothers at home. I will tell you this. I've, I've watched it on DVD in the past few years, uh, and I can't, I didn't hear it, but maybe I missed it, but I remember exactly hearing the uh you know in mario brothers 3 the video game yeah. Oh, yeah you go to the middle castle in each each world not the big one with the with the ship yes but little castle with boom boom at the end yeah the music a bit like dun 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 da, 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 you know like that uh i swear i heard that whenever they were uh towards the end of the movie when they're like going in the elevator and stuff in the mario movie in 93 okay but I didn't hear it on my rewatch. So if anybody knows, is that noise in there? Or am I having a false memory? Or did they change it after the theatrical release? Uh, let me know. There's things I've watched, like media that I've watched, uh, that I swear, like I swore this happened in this specific movie. Yeah. But you go back and watch it and you're like, okay, that was a memory that I formed that was just kind of similar from another movie I had seen. And I just got them crossed. Sometimes they change stuff after, like old movies would, before they put them on VHS. Uh, they would actually change certain things. Um, yeah. That you would, if you saw it in theaters, you saw a version that nobody else is ever going to see. There's a few. Yeah, they, well, the Star Wars movies, the original Star Wars movies that, like, our parents saw in the 70s, when George Lucas decided to redo them in the 90s, when Josh and I were, like, in junior high in, like, sixth grade, those are the only copies that you can get now on Blu ray or, like, DVD, you can't even get the actual original Star Wars films anymore. The yeah. ones that were like fixed up, you know, and made better. All he did was add like an extra thousand stormtroopers in the background or like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jabba can now move around a little bit or whatever. Um, ultimate cash grab, George Lucas. Great job. Uh, but anyway, Mario Brothers, huge success. Guaranteed they're probably going to make a Zelda movie, probably going to make a Metroid movie. This is probably opening the doors for Nintendo to make a bunch of movies. 
Jack Black is the perfect Bowser from all the clips I've seen, and he wants Pablo Pascal to be Wario in the sequel, and I think that would be a good voice for Wario. The guy from The Last of Us, and he was Prince Oberon in Game of Thrones. Yeah, he's really popular right now. They're using his pit, Pablo Pascal. They're using his like picture uh, for everything, where he's like kind of just eating at a table, just looks unbothered by life. <laughs> yeah. He's really famous right now. Yeah. Um, awesome. Next headline. This is kind of a horror story. It's a headline slash horror story. Lisa Wilcox. Everybody knows her as Alice in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Four. The Dream Master, Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, Alice, the star of both those films. Lisa Wilcox and her son uh, have made the bold career decision to appear on TLC's new show, MILF Manor. Um, So the show, basically, Josh, is like her and her son, uh, a bunch of older, attractive females and their sons show up to an island or a mansion or something and the rules are that the MILFs can date the other MILFs' sons. So, okay. like, the, fir- the first scene that, that Lisa Wilcox is in with her son, her son is um, showing his oral sex skills on a piece of fruit right in front of his mother and all the other MILFs and their children. Cringiest shit I've ever seen. It's, it's gross. It looks ridiculous. And Josh, my first question, this is a big question. Lisa Wilcox decided to appear on MILF Manor with her son. Uh, she thought that was a better career option than appearing on Getting Sidetracked with Alex and Josh. Yeah, she was invited. She she even did a shout out for the, uh, for the books, channel for Not Run Elm Street uh, 4 and 5 books. Yeah, so yeah, that's just, I got no comment, brother. That's just, uh-uh, no, no thank you. I love New York season three is what that sounds like. No. I'm good. I don't understand, like, I don't understand how you go from, like, starring in movies and, like, she was on an episode of, like, Star Trek The Next Generation. She was in a bunch of TV shows in the 80s and 90s. She does comic cons like crazy. She does panels. It's money. <laughs> money and everything, but, like, Milk Manor? Like, you're going to appear on a dating show, like, where you're going to watch your son, like, give oral sex uh, technique uh, demonstrations to pieces of fruit. Like, that's, that is, like... This is cringy TV at its best, man. This yeah. is like the Running Man. This is like we're we're just not killing each other anymore on games. We're not actually killing people on game shows. This is a Running Man, but this is even weirder. Crazy, crazy we're shit. Our kids with other milfs. <laughs> oh, can you? I you know I haven't even checked it out, but now I kind of want to check it out. <laughs> um, last last story of the Express episode. Let's do it. You ready? And I apologize for lying. Uh, We're not under 30 minutes. We're a little bit over, but here we go. Last episode. Lady Gaga, famous actress. Not not the last episode, folks. Last story. Last story of the first ever Express episode. Uh, Lady Gaga, famous actress. She's going to be in the new Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. Um, She's playing Harley Quinn. It's supposedly going to be a musical. But anyway, Lady Gaga is being sued by the woman who stole her dogs for $1.5 million. Jennifer McBride claims that Lady Gaga failed to pay the $500,000 reward that was promised. Uh, McBride was originally thought to be uninvolved in the dog napping, but it was later uncovered that McBride was in a relationship with one of the men believed to have orchestrated the actual dog napping crime. McBride Josh is currently suing for mental anguish and lack of life enjoyment. She's suffering big time because she stole Lady Gaga's dogs, returned the dogs because there was a promise of a $500,000 reward. (laughs) Lady Gaga found out what was going on, said she wasn't going to pay. Your thoughts? That lady needs to call the paparazzi. (laughs) I got nothing, man. I think she did, man. She needs to... uh... Uh, Man, I I got nothing on that. She, She stole the dogs... Yes. And, and she's flipping out because she didn't get paid for acting like she was <laughs> saving A hero. Her. She's basically saying she's a hero. Return the dogs to Lady Gaga. She's claiming she didn't have anything to do with the napping, but the person who actually did the dog napping was her boyfriend or husband or whatever. Um, was Lady Gaga's, like, it would it would have been helpful if we knew if her, Lady Gaga's dog's name was Alejandro. And when she called for the dog, when it initially went missing, Alejandro, Alejandro. Alejandro, Alejandro. 
<laughs> shitty joke. Shitty joke to end the show. Just like the possum taking a shit at Oakland Coliseum, Josh, in the Express episode, buddy. All right, guys. This has been Slash Tracks Action News Express number one. Thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate you. Write us at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Go to patreon.com forward slash forward slash 80 slash librarian. It's going to be on the screen, so just bleh, turn the volume down and go to that. Yeah. Uh, support the channel. We'd really appreciate it. Be excellent to each other. Have a good night and a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Check out Milf Manor on TLC. Mahalo, dogs. <laughs>